In our last episode, we helped Ali Fillmore of the Institute obtain a beryllium agitator from the pre-war mass fusion nuclear power company. After giving it to her in advanced systems, she told us that father was looking for us. And so heading to his chambers, we find that he's in a conversation with Dr. Dean Volkert. How's your energy level? Feeling any fatigue? No more than I'd expect from a man of my age. Okay. You're sticking to the regimen we agreed upon? Yes, Doctor. I'm taking all my little pills. I see. And you've been getting extra rest? Are there many more of these questions? Okay. Any additional pain or tenderness? Not that I've noticed, no. I feel quite well. Interesting. I believe we're done now. Thank you. You wanted to see me? I understand mass fusion was a success, despite interference from the Brotherhood of Steel. What did you hear? Dr. Fillmore's report was quite thorough. The job is done. That's what matters. For the moment, yes. It would have been much quicker if they hadn't gotten in the way. Yes. They are becoming a nuisance. We handled them just fine. That's what Dr. Fillmore reported. I'm quite pleased at the results. It would have been a terrible setback to lose that technology to those savages. The Brotherhood's intervention must be placed in a larger context, however, given their penchant for hoarding technology. Future conflict with them is guaranteed. We are, after all, keepers of the most advanced technology in the Commonwealth, if not beyond. It also cannot go unnoticed that there were... concerns within the Institute about your allegiances. I, of course, never doubted your commitment to our cause. But by directly confronting the Brotherhood, I think you've put some others at ease. I'm proud of you. Regardless, the Brotherhood is an issue for the future, and we must focus on the present. And look at me, rambling on like the old man I am. I'm wasting time. You're needed elsewhere at once. Oh, good. Here I was afraid I'd have nothing to do. Very funny. There's something that needs your immediate attention. Do you need more parts for the reactor? I could have gotten them while I was out. No, but it is related in a sense. What should have been a simple situation has unfortunately become complicated. I only just got back. Now what? I understand, but we have a problem. Whatever it is, I can take care of it. I certainly hope so. While you were working with Dr. Fillmore, a small team was dispatched elsewhere in the Commonwealth. Dr. Thompson was tasked with inviting someone from the Commonwealth to join the Institute. Do you often extend invitations to join? No, certainly not. Ordinarily, it would never be considered. But this case presented very special circumstances. That sounds unusual. I thought you didn't let anyone in here. Usually, you would be correct. This time, however, an exception was made. Let me guess. He botched the job. It is unclear exactly what happened. But at this time, I am not concerned with placing blame. Sounds simple enough. It was supposed to be, yes. There was no indication that this would be a problem. But the arrival of the team was an unwelcome surprise to Mr. Wallace. Somewhere along the way, he must have realized we'd been monitoring him from a distance. He called in mercenaries to defend him. I'm sure there's nothing we can't handle. Ensure the safety of the team and Mr. Wallace, and see that they all arrive back here safely. I'll be waiting. However, this conversation goes very differently if we're the general of the Minutemen. This situation, I'm afraid, is something of your creation, however unintentional. I find that very hard to believe. Yes, which is why I said I believe it to be unintentional. I've risked myself repeatedly for the Institute, and this is what I get? Whatever's happened, it's not my fault. Calm down. Let me explain. If I've done something to jeopardize the Institute, I'll fix it. You have my word. I have no doubt that you will. But it's nothing quite so dire. What do you mean by that? What's happened? Well, while you were assisting Dr. Fillmore, a second team was sent out to... invite someone from the Commonwealth to join the Institute. Apparently, there was some miscommunication, and this individual called for help, which arrived in the form of your Minutemen. My understanding is that no shots have been fired. I would like it to stay that way. I need you to go there and speak to your Minutemen gathered outside. Insist that they stand down at once. Dr. Thompson is on site, and he will be your primary contact. I know you can resolve this situation, but it is of paramount importance that this special individual be brought to the Institute immediately. 
Why all this effort? What's so special about this person? Mr. Wallace? Despite a lack of formal training, our surveillance has shown he has incredible intellect. With his help, we may be able to drastically speed up work on the reactor. I don't know if I can settle this peacefully. There may not be an easy solution to this. They are your people, are they not? They follow you? Then they should listen to you. If they cannot see reason, well... I'm afraid that may put you in a difficult position. But please, hurry, before the situation deteriorates. I'm not going to betray the Minutemen. I'm not asking you to. I expect that since these people have listened to you so far, they will continue to listen. Make them see reason. But please, hurry. If fighting breaks out, it will be difficult to stop. They'll listen to me. I'll figure something out. You can consider this handled. Believe me, I already do. So if we never encountered the Minutemen and eventually became general, this Mr. Wallace hires a bunch of mercenaries to protect him from the Institute. But if we began to rebuild the Minutemen by becoming general, he turns to the Minutemen, making this a much more awkward encounter for us. We discover that Mr. Wallace is hiding out in a home between Arcjet Systems and the Grey Gardens Homestead. If we are not the general of the Minutemen, we find the homestead guarded by gunners, and they attack on sight. Thought I heard something move. Detected. Possible. Life signs detected. With the gunners dead, we simply walk inside to resolve the situation. But if we are the general of the Minutemen, we arrive to find Minutemen guarding the house. They're not hostile, of course, because there are men and we can talk with them. What's going on here? You're an unexpected surprise. We could use the backup. These Institute bastards aren't getting away. They'll have to go through us to get out of there. We don't know quite what we're up against, but it's good you're here to help. Uh, how did you hear about this? Can you bring me up to speed on the situation? Commonwealth Citizen lives in that there observatory. Institute thugs showed up to haul him off, only he spotted them coming. He managed to fire off a flare gun, got our attention, and we got up here as quick as we could. Now they're trapped inside. I'm not sure you know what's going on here. This situation is complicated. Oh, I know exactly what's going on. These assholes think they can kidnap whoever they want, whenever they want. Well, not today. Not while we're here. I can't believe you thought this was a valuable use of time and resources. Are you kidding me? The Institute is clearly trying to kidnap a Commonwealth citizen. Again. And you're saying we shouldn't be here? I thought our whole purpose was to protect the people, to stop shit like this from happening. You've done good work. Thank you. Uh, sir, so, how do you want to play this? We thought about trying to lure him out here, since it'd be easier to kill him. But then we realized we probably ought to storm the place, to make sure they can't disappear on us. That makes sense, right? So, you want to lead the charge? What do you know about the person who lives here? Not too much. Wallace is his name. Kind of an egghead type, but real squirrely. Keeps to himself. We've checked in on him every now and then, but he didn't seem to want the company. So, we moving in or what? It's interesting that he said that Wallace was holed up in an observatory, when clearly he's not holed up in an observatory. This makes me think that the quest, at one point, had a very different structure. I'm curious as to what that looked like. At any rate, at this point, we have three options, two of which have the same result. We could say, have your men hold their ground. I'll go in and assess the situation. I don't think that's a good idea. Sir, we have to act now, or else we risk not only letting them get away, but taking one of us with them. Or we could say, No one is going to do anything. Tell your men to stand down. I don't... Are you kidding me? If we don't do something now, they're going to take that poor guy wherever it is they go, and we'll have failed. Again. Are you going to order the attack or not? Both of which lead to the same dialogue tree. Note that he said, fail again here. He's likely referring to the Quincy Massacre. 
Considering this guy was recruited after the Quincy Massacre, it's good to see that he knows his Minutemen history, and he's taking it upon himself to help rectify the Minutemen's mistakes from the past. You'd risk that man's life? You could get him killed too. If we don't do anything, he's as good as dead. I'm giving you an order, soldier. Maybe you don't understand. This ain't the military, and I don't have to take orders from you. Or we could try to pass a yellow charisma check. And if we fail it... This whole thing is just a misunderstanding. This isn't a misunderstanding. This is you telling us to stand by while the Institute abuses us. Are you so against this? You do know which side you're on, don't you? But if we pass... A misunderstanding. Can't wait to hear this. Explain to me how this is a misunderstanding. But this just leads to another dialogue tree with four more charisma checks. Even if we pass the charisma check, we get to the same dialogue tree that we get to if we fail it. Failing any of these charisma checks has the same result. We could say, You sure you're willing to risk being wrong about this? I'm tired of risking things. I'm tired of risking lives. And that's why I'm not letting them take this guy. Or we could say, You don't have all the information. I do. And I'm telling you, this isn't what it looks like. That man's not in danger. You know what? I've got all the information I need. I'm tired of you trying to confuse things. Now you get the hell out of my way. I have a citizen to protect. Or we could say, I know for a fact they won't hurt that man. And if you get in the way, I'm gonna have to take you down. Ready to back you up, sir. Now you're gonna threaten me? Are you out of your damn mind? Or are you working for them? I ain't gonna shoot you, but you better stay the hell out of our way while we do what needs to be done. Or we could say, The Institute wants the same things you do. We can find a way to work together. We don't need their help. No. No way. Not after years of kidnapping us, killing us, replacing us with damn robots. Now we're going in there, and if you're not gonna help, you damn well better stay out of our way. With that, a bunch of synths relay from the Institute and defend the homestead. The synths are aggressive towards the Minutemen, and the Minutemen are aggressive towards the synths. The Minutemen don't run up and raid the homestead. However, where they're standing, they're within aggro range of the synths. And so eventually, they spot each other and begin to attack. If we stand back and let this thing play out, the Minutemen don't stand a chance. Within a matter of moments, the Gen 2 synths completely obliterate the Minutemen. In this way, we can resolve the Minuteman situation without getting our hands dirty. But if we pass those charisma checks, we get different dialogue from the Minutemen each time. You sure you're willing to risk being wrong about this? Look, I, I just want people to be safe, you know? I don't want anyone else dying or getting kidnapped or whatever. We won't start shooting or nothing. But you, you better get in there and make sure you're right. You don't have all the information. I do. And I'm telling you, this isn't what it looks like. That man's not in danger. You'd better be right. If you're not, that man's life is on your head. I'll have my men stand down. But you'd better get in there and make sure you're right. I know for a fact they won't hurt that man. And if you get in the way, I'm gonna have to take you down. Ready to back you up, sir. Whoa, whoa, look. I'm not trying to get everyone here killed, okay? Fine, we won't act. But if they kidnap that guy, it's on your head. The Institute wants the same things you do. We can find a way to work together. We don't need their help. I don't know about that, but look, if nothing else, you'd best get in there and make sure that man's okay. I'll make sure no one makes a move on him in the meantime. But, well, you'd better be right about this. With that, the Minutemen stand down. They don't leave, but they're not aggressive. And Institute synths do not relay into the property. Or we could attack the Minutemen. Hey! Get out! Oh, him! Forget to check your ammo levels. With that, the quest log updates, we've eliminated the opposition. And this has no apparent effect on our standing with the Minutemen. Presumably because all witnesses to this event are dead. Preston Garvey never finds out about it. He never talks about it. We never lose our status as General of the Minutemen. Or 
we can side with the Minutemen and turn on the Institute. You're right. Let's go in there and get them. All right, then. Let's go. Let's take them now. Before they have a chance to get away. All right. We'll follow your lead. And if we do, Institute synths do not spawn outside. Instead, the Minutemen charge the house, and we can follow them inside. All of these choices greatly impact what happens inside the house. If we side with the Minutemen and encourage them to attack the homestead, they race inside. The synths didn't spawn outside, but they do appear inside. But the result is very much the same. If we stand back and do nothing, the synths destroy the Minutemen pretty quickly and pretty easily. And if we don't fire a shot at the Institute, we can continue working with the Institute as normal. In this way, we can solve the Minutemen problem while agreeing to work with them to their face, but abandoning them when they need us. However, we could side with the Minutemen and attack the Institute. If we do, Enrico Thompson turns hostile. If X-688 is with us, he turns hostile. We have to kill them all. But doing so makes us a permanent enemy of the Institute. We fail the quest, pinned, and we fail any other Institute quests that we have active. We also fail any quests from the other factions who wanted us to maintain our cover working with the Institute. We also start all of those factions and game quests, and we start the quest banished from the Institute. If we kill all of the Institute in this room, we no longer have an option to talk with Wallace, the man we came here to protect. In fact, we find that he's not in the house. He's normally behind this door, but this room is empty. The only explanation is that somehow the Institute relayed this guy while we were fighting them. They got him anyway. The Minutemen go back outside and linger around where we found them. They don't have anything yes. further to say. But, if after making this choice, we fast travel back to the Institute... Did you think we would not see what you have done? Did you think I wouldn't know you've betrayed me? After all I've done, the lengths to which I've gone to give you a new home, a new life, for us to be a family. But you have made your choice. From this point on, you are an enemy of the Institute. Should you cross us, we will kill you. Go now, and live whatever meaningless life you can. And he relays us to the ruins of CIT. We lose our ability to relay in and out of the Institute, and we are now kill on sight. However, if we kill the Minutemen, if we kill the Gunners, or if we convince the Minutemen to hold their ground outside, when we go into the house, we can talk with Enrico Thompson. Oh, thank God you're here. I was starting to worry we might not make it out of this mess. How exactly did this happen? I'm not suited for field work. I've said that over and over, and they sent me anyway. There was no indication that Wallace had been in contact with anyone or was aware that we might be watching him. If I'd known, I'd... I don't know. Maybe I'd have tried to handle things differently. Let's focus on getting back. I couldn't agree more. It wouldn't have been such a mess if you handled it differently. I never claimed to be suited for field work and I explicitly stated that when given this assignment. Mercenaries. You believe that? There was no intelligence to suggest that he was that paranoid. Everything's taken care of. You're safe. It was bad enough when Wallace reacted so poorly to our arrival, but then Gunners? I was not prepared for that. Or, if Wallace called in the Minutemen... Besides, it's not my fault that Wallace called in those savages. Everything's taken care of. You're safe. Good. Good. It was bad enough that Wallace started giving us trouble, but then he called in those savages. Weren't you prepared for some amount of resistance? Of course not. It was supposed to be a simple chat with Wallace and an invitation to join us. I didn't know he was this paranoid. Those savages had you pretty well cornered. Did I not mention the part where we didn't expect this? 
This was supposed to be a simple extraction. Those are good men out there. You have no right to insult them like that. Those good men of yours wanted to kill me. Forgive me for not thinking terribly highly of them. The Minutemen were only doing what they felt was right. Well, from here it looked like they were out for blood. And if you hadn't arrived, I think they might have gotten it. Can we just get on with this, please? I know he's potentially important to Phase 3 and all, but I'm not sure it's worth putting ourselves in harm's way. Why did the Institute send you specifically? They thought I'd be able to relate to him with my scientific background. This does seem like lots of effort for just one man. Look, if things were different, we might not be here. Not now, at least. But with the situation in the Commonwealth being what it is... Far as I can tell, you were only in harm's way because you screwed this up. Look, I had the same intelligence reports as everyone else. No one saw this coming. Disappointing, Doctor. If he's really important to the Institute, then it's worth it. <sighs> You're right, I suppose. What information do you have? I know they've been keeping an eye on him for years. Not sure how they originally found him, but probably don't want to know. But once they realized how smart he was and what an asset he could be for Phase 3, they watched pretty closely. I think they even fed him scientific material from time to time to see how good he was, you know, testing him to see if he was Institute material. Let's just get Wallace and get out of here. What does this Wallace guy have to do with Phase 3? Wallace is, well, brilliant by all accounts. Like nothing we'd seen in the Commonwealth prior. He truly has a gift when it comes to theoretical physics. He'd be an asset to the Institute, specifically in getting the reactor running. With his help, we could accelerate the timetable immensely. We've already drawn enough attention. Time's wasting, so let's pick up the pace. I'd love to. What do you mean, get Wallace? You don't have him already? I know. No argument from me. Let's go. Right. There's just... well, there's a slight problem with that. He doesn't want to go with us. I was thinking... maybe you could try and talk to him. <sighs> Any advice on how to talk to him? Don't make him angry. Let him know we're not going to hurt him. In fact, his life would improve considerably. Talk is cheap. Maybe it's time to kick in the door. No, no. We need this man on our side. He needs to see that we'll help him as much as he'll help us. Just don't antagonize him and you should be fine. I guess I'll have to, since you're useless. I think that's a little unfair. No problem. I'm sure I can get him to see reason. I hope so. We really need him. Now we've got to convince this Wallace that he's better off with the Institute. I guess just simply relaying him back to the Institute is the last resort. Before we confront Wallace, however, we can explore this homestead. There's a staircase leading to a top floor with a little bit of scrap and a door leading back out to the Commonwealth. This at one time led to an upper floor of the house which is now in complete ruin and all we find up here are a few synths. No sign that this was ever an observatory, not even an amateur one. Back inside, the ground floor where Enrico Thompson is has a little bit of scrap, but that's about it. Though we do find a staircase leading to a basement. This basement door, however, is locked with an expert lock. I couldn't pick this, but if we could, inside we find an empty refrigerator, some minor scrap on some shelves and in a washer and dryer, and then a stock room with minimal scrap. Really, the only thing of note in this room is an advanced locked safe at the bottom of a shelf, but it has a lot of ammunition in it, including a stack of missiles. This must be Wallace's lab. Really, the only scientific thing we find here is a Tesla arc trap on a shelf. There's a novice locked toolbox beneath another shelf with some minor scrap inside and a chemistry station nearby. One wonders exactly how Wallace became as brilliant as he apparently is. That is to say, how did he demonstrate his ability to the Institute with resources like this? It's not like he was working for a fancy lab or maintaining a nuclear reactor for, I don't know, Diamond City or something. Now he appears to be a hermetic amateur, working for no one but himself, pursuing science as a passion or a hobby, not actually utilizing it. It's almost unbelievable that a guy like Wallace could exist in this post-apocalyptic wasteland. A man so good at theoretical physics, with apparently no academic or scientific background, that the Institute needs him. So much so they're willing to kidnap him. I get the impression that this quest was trimmed down a bit from its original incarnation. 
Had we found Wallace as a working amateur scientist at an actual observatory, it would have made more sense for the Institute to monitor him and for them to want him to join them. At any rate, with the basement explored, we can head upstairs and try to reason with Mr. Wallace through a bedroom door. Mr. Wallace, I'm here to talk to you. You're another one of, uh, of them, aren't you? Are you a robot? Don't be ridiculous. Of course I'm not a robot. That's exactly what a robot would say. Sir, are you okay? Have you been injured in any way? I'm locked in a bathroom to avoid killer robots. Of course I'm not okay. It's not a bathroom. It's a bedroom, as we saw earlier. But whatever. I mean you no harm. No one here does, all right? We're just here to talk. You're not stealing my organs, or shooting me into space, or whatever it is you do. I won't let you. Please, try and relax. I know this is an unusual situation. No! You're here to kidnap me. That's what you people do, isn't it? If you even are people. I've heard all the stories. I know exactly what happens to people when the Institute shows up. Well, it's not happening to me. What can I say to convince you that we're not going to hurt you? That you're leaving and never coming back. Right. We're here to steal your kidneys and your memories. That's why I'm wasting time talking to you through the door. That's not funny. None of this is funny. At this point to proceed, we have to pass or fail one of two charisma checks, neither of which are easy. We can try to get him to calm down, but if we fail... Hey, just calm down, okay? I just want to talk to you. If I wanted to talk, I wouldn't be in here. Now just, just go away. But if we succeed... <sighs> fine, fine. What do you want from me? Or we could try to pass a red charisma check to threaten him. And if we fail... Just shut up and listen to me. We're not here to hurt you. But if you make this difficult, you're going to regret it. See? I knew it! You're here to kill me. But if we succeed... Okay, all right. What do you want from me? Why are you here? If we fail both charisma checks, Enrico steps in. Sure. Okay, look. We're out of time here. Institute, this is Dr. Thompson. I'm sorry, I'm gonna need a synth relayed to my coordinates offset by 5.3 to subdue our subject. I appreciate your help with the situation outside, but we have to get this man back to the Institute. I expect Father will want a report from you. The sooner we can get out of here, the better. The Institute relays in a synth to incapacitate Mr. Wallace. We find him lying in bed unresponsive. But we completed the quest, and I guess we helped. However, if we pass either of the charisma checks, we open up a new dialogue tree with Mr. Wallace. Mr. Wallace, would you be willing to help the Institute? Help the Institute? But aren't, aren't they, you, I'm, I'm the bad guys? It's important, and it'll benefit you. Just trust me. You can't just barge in here and insist that I, I'm not even sure what. Please, tell me something about what's going on. I can't tell you what it's about, but it's important. Look, I'm really not comfortable with anything that's happening right now. The Institute needs your help, Mr. Wallace. It's as simple as that. My help? With... with what? The Institute has an engineering problem that your scientific expertise could help solve. In exchange for helping us out, you'd be granted access to the most advanced research facility imaginable. Whatever research you wanted to perform, anything, it's possible there. I promise, you'd be safe and secure in a way that's completely impossible anywhere else. You have a better option than what we're offering you? No. No, I guess I don't. Think about your future, Wallace. This is a way to secure it. I suppose that's one way to look at it. This is an opportunity you will never have again. Don't be stupid. Don't pass it up. Don't call me stupid. You'd be helping us create a better world. That... That sounds good. Okay, fine. I'll go. Ah, <sighs> okay. I think we've got this under control now. Thanks. I mean, thanks for the assist. You're gonna bring him in immediately, right? Oh, yeah. Don't want him to start second-guessing the decision. I'm here for the Institute, not for you. Right, right. Okay, I gotcha. Oh, screw you. There are plenty of things I'd rather have done than come fix your mess. Wow, 
Okay. Message received. Hey, I'm here to help. You're welcome. I really mean it. I owe you one. I'll see you back in the Institute. With that, we complete the quest, Pinned. And we begin the quest, Powering Up. We need to head back to the Institute and speak with Father. This quest is notable because, up until now, we've only been able to piece together evidence that the Institute really does kidnap people from the Commonwealth through hollow tapes and terminal entries and working with planted synths. We haven't actually seen any first-hand evidence of it, except for the art versus art random encounter. But even then, we have to pass a charisma check to learn that the Institute really is trying to replace somebody with a synth. But with this quest, we are actively participating in kidnapping someone from the Commonwealth, not to replace him with a synth in this particular case, but to forcibly conscript him to join the Institute. Of course, we have an option, if our charisma is high enough, to convince him to come willingly, but those are both difficult charisma checks. And if we fail them, the Institute still takes him by force. Now, Father told us that this is really an exceptional situation. The Institute rarely, if ever, conscripts someone from the Commonwealth to join it. However, we've already found plenty of evidence that the Institute frequently kidnaps people from the Commonwealth for other purposes, primarily to experiment on them. And in those cases, they're less likely to send an Institute scientist to reason with somebody, to convince them to come to the Institute, and are more likely to send coursers to forcibly kidnap them at gunpoint, like they did with the original Roger Warwick. Heading back outside, if we manage to convince the Minutemen to stand Peter. down, we find them where we left them. But they have no further dialogue about this standoff. They just stay here until we leave. So essentially the outcomes are this. If we ask the Minutemen to attack, or can't convince them not to, they likely charge into the house to their deaths. But if we assist them, we get banished from the Institute. All we gain by convincing them to stay outside are their lives. But even if they die, there are no ramifications with the Minutemen, and there are no consequences with the Minutemen for convincing them to stay outside either, despite the fact that we're using our position as general to interfere with a Commonwealth citizen's call for help, which is the very purpose of the Minutemen to begin with. We can complete this quest by passing our charisma checks inside the house, convincing Wallace to go willingly, or by failing all of the charisma checks and forcing the Institute to incapacitate him and kidnap him. There's not even a dialogue difference with Father when we head back to the Institute. But we'll find out what he has to say about our success here in my next episode. I publish new Fallout episodes each and every week here on my channel, so if you don't want to miss that episode, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. If you have already, but you still feel like you're missing out on YouTube notifications, consider following me on Twitter at Oxhorn. I update Twitter manually with every new piece of content that I publish. I have a shirt shop with completely unique designs that you can't find anywhere else. My designs come on shirts in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. You can find them on other products as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, mugs, stickers, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in another way, consider giving me a super thanks on this video. Your super thanks directly contribute to the production of this series. You can become a supporter on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. YouTube members get little badges that appear next to their names in the comment sections of my videos, and they get access to ox emojis that they can use in my video comments and in the live chats of my live streams. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with the next episode in the full story of Fallout 4. Yeah.